What's up, everybody? My name is Shannon, and I am still waiting for my Seder. And before we get to the main event, I wanted to start off by talking about this little book right here, A Tyranny of Petticoats. Some of you may remember that at the beginning of the year, I was really excited to read this. It's an anthology where all of the stories are about, like, women throughout all of history. But upon finishing it, uh, it really wasn't that great. I don't really have anything to say about it, which is why it's not getting its own video. All I really have to say is that some of them were really good, but then others were just really, really bad. Some of them, like the short story format just didn't work and like others didn't have enough information and it's just really, really hit or miss. So would I recommend this book? I'd say probably not unless you're willing to tough it out or if you're just going to pick and choose and you know which ones you want to read. So yeah, Tyranny of Petticoats kind of just gets like a solid meh from me. But now on to the main event. Today we are going to be talking about the book of Lost Things by John Connolly. So for those of you who don't know, The Book of Lost Things is very, very similar to A Monster Calls, but with more of like a fairy tale twist. But they're so similar that I would actually go as far to say that A Monster Calls accomplishes the objective a lot better than A Book of Lost Things. But A Book of Lost Things does other things better in that it talks about like reading and how people can view the world and how like stories like need people to read them and like want to be read and that kind of thing but in regards to the main character like David going on this journey learning how to cope with his mother dying and like things are changing all around him a monster calls does do that a little bit better however getting into this story David's mother obviously dies very early on and he is not handling things very well like his father is away a lot he's very busy with um, the war going on and he gets this new stepmother and he gets this new half brother and he's just very unhappy and all he can do really is to escape into reading because that's his favorite thing to do. He's always loved reading. He and his mother would always read together, but it soon starts to not be enough and he's just getting angrier and angrier and like suddenly he can hear the books talking to him and then one day he is thrust inside of this like world of books where all of the fairy tales that he's always loved to read come alive. And he goes on this journey and he starts to see things a little bit differently because the stories that he's known and loved are warped by what he's going through and the stories change kind of to reflect what he's feeling and seeing them like come to life he realizes where he's gone wrong and he really starts to grow as a character all the way up to the end where he can finally like accept what's happened and realizes that you know, nothing's going to bring his mother back and all he can really do is to take things one day at a time and to understand that things may be different, but that doesn't mean that things are bad. And I do really like that message, but my favorite message from this book is really that the author, John Connolly, is showing us this character that uses reading to understand the world. He uses reading to understand people and what's going on around him. He even goes so far as to say that he thinks readers has a greater capacity for empathy because they can see themselves in somebody else's shoes because they've seen it so often in the stories that they've read. And I don't know if I'd go all the way that far, but I really identify with this. Obviously, I read a lot of books and I have started to notice that I use the stories that I read to kind of make sense of the world around me. I kind of put myself in their shoes and can see like what's going on and I use my favorite stories to kind of just make sense of everything and I, I really like that he's showing that and he's wanting to teach this to a new generation of readers because while at times the book of lost things is very very dark John Connolly heavily like insists that this book is for everybody it's for all ages and that's because at every stage that you read it, you will get something different out of it. If you're reading it when you're very young, you won't really pick up on all of those dark things, but instead you will still learn about like how David is learning to grow and learning to accept change. But if you read it later on, like when you're older or even like when you're my age, which is only 20, you're going to pick up on those darker things. You're going to see like hints of the real world starting to bleed through. And it's really, really fascinating to me. And he even talks about that at the very end of the book that just books change people's lives but books only can do that 
if you read them. Books want to be read. They need life because you breathe life into them. They can't do anything until you pick them up and decide to let them change you. And I absolutely love that. That is my favorite thing about books, I've always believed that about books, is that they have the power to change you if you let them. Books only have power if you let them have power, and that is really what the Book of Lost Things highlights, and I absolutely 100% love seeing that. Now, the reason I've knocked this book's score down so low, because I know, like, the way I'm talking about it, why isn't it an A plus? Well, the reason I'm only giving it a B plus is because this book is very sexist. Now, context matters, and in this story, you know, David is going through a lot of stuff. Really, the only woman in it that is good is his mother and his mother isn't actually a character. David just kind of thinks a lot about her, but every other woman in the story is evil or bad or wrong in some kind of way. And I understand that that has everything to do with David's perception twisting these stories. Like the way he's handling like living with his stepmother and all that kind of stuff is bleeding in to these stories, but the sexism is so overt that it just really started to grade on my nerves, so I did knock it down basically an entire letter grade. However, the Book of Lost Things is still absolutely phenomenal and I highly recommend it to everybody. I truly do believe that this is a book that needs to be experienced by everyone. Even if you're not a reader, this book might even turn you into a reader. It's that good. It's so, so amazing. And I just, I cannot say enough good things about it. As always, if you want to check out this book, I will leave a link to the author's website down in the description, as well as the Tyranny of Petticoats, if you want to give that one a shot. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe so you can talk books with me every Monday. That's everything I got for you today, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye!